when you're stereotyped from the start. Well, stereotypes and myths of Native Americans are finally being broken. I, I think that's, that's really important. Today, we speak to an actor breaking through. I want to make sure that we're doing things uh, authentically and we are putting the right people in place so we do tell these stories authentically. Over 80 credits in movies and TV, Zon McLarnon joins us now. We're finally becoming uh, visible. Welcome to The Pulse. We're back again. And as I say, pretty much every week, we like to bring on people who are important, significant, successful, making a difference, entertaining, all those things. And we've got another guest who is doing all of that today. We are happy to be joined by Zon McLarnon, actor with a whole bunch of credits. We appreciate you spending some time with us on The Pulse. How are you, sir? Good. It's good to be here. I appreciate you guys bringing me on. I got to tell you, so we've been doing this show for, for a minute, for a couple months since February, and everybody involved in the show has their favorites so far. Our executive, or our, our producer, Ivana, loves you. She kept talking to me like, oh, we've got to get Zon McLarnon on, and I saw him in this, 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 and this. So you've got a huge fan there. Oh, that's awesome. I appreciate the support so much. I really, really do. We try to start off every show kind of giving people a chance, especially people with you know, a list of accomplishments, uh, to define themselves because society is always trying to define. So when someone asks you that, how do you define your career and your successes? Um, I, 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 I'm just very fortunate, extremely fortunate and grateful that uh, I am a working actor. Um, I did work hard at it and I have been working hard, hard at it for, for the last 30 years. And um, you know, it's it's just a, a wonderful time in um, for native representation in, in film and in television right now. It's a unique time that we're finally getting uh, having a little bit of control over our stories and our narrative, and the opportunity to to tell our stories and for people to see it. You know, I started off uh, when there wasn't very many jobs available for native talent. Mm -hmm. And finally, these doors slowly have been opening up a little bit, little bit, you know, each year for us. And again, it's just they finally have opened up so you could kind of peek your head out. I think we have a, a ways to go yet, but uh, I'm very grateful and fortunate that I'm, I'm living in a time where, um, you know, uh, those doors are opened up a little bit more. You've been doing it for, you know, for 30 years and had roles for significant periods of time. Uh, you say that it's a great time right now. How has it been watching it change? Like in the middle of it, did you see that progress or was it frustrating along the way? Uh, I started off in the early 90s as an actor. I moved out here. And from that point until now, a lot of things have changed slowly over the last 30 years now. Wow, it's 30 years. I can't believe it's been 30 years. But, um, you know, sure, it was frustrating playing, having to the only opportunities that we had as as indigenous uh, actors was, you know, riding horses and yipping and yelling and getting shot and, yeah. you know, uh, playing the stoic kind of stereotypical uh, tropes um, that were written for us. Um, and it's just wonderful to see uh, that we're finally getting control of our own narrative and, and we're telling our own stories. I'm still writing on the the shoulders of my predecessors, though, you know. Um, I'm mm -hmm. Chief Dan Georges, the Will Sampsons, uh, the Jay Silverheels, you know, they kind of paved the road for me. And I hope that. Uh, uh, Shows like Dark Winds and, and Reservation Dogs and uh, Rutherford Falls, uh, you know, open those doors and, and pave that road even more for future uh, people in front of the camera and behind the camera as well. Uh, I'm always curious when I talk to people and, and just in general about diversity in Hollywood. Is that an honor or a burden? Uh, is it an honor? that you've continued to work and you've made this progress, you know, or is it a burden that you kind of have to shoulder that as you continue to go forward? You know, there's a responsibility there as an indigenous actor to uh, represent your, your, your community. 
in a, in a good way. Um, not just on camera, but personally, you know, in your daily life. Um, that's really important to me to be, to be an example to the younger generation, um, to, to share my, my experiences, my strengths, uh, my hopes, and just to represent uh, my community in a positive way is, is important. I, I take that on, you know. Um, I mean, I'm obviously on television and uh, my face is seen a lot by, by the community. And I want to represent them, represent them in a positive way. And I, I want to make sure that we're doing things uh, authentically and we are putting the right people in place so we do tell these stories authentically. I will share with you that we do research, obviously, before we talk to everybody. And you know those, those pages that list everybody's accomplishments? I have to send you the link. There was one on you, and in one of the lines, it, it says, has never been associated with any controversy or negative issues in his career. I saw that and went, you know, and obviously there have been things that you stood for and things that you fought for, and we can explore that. But it was interesting seeing somebody with a successful career that didn't have <laughs> that asterisk next to it. You know, uh, I, I, I have principles and, and, and you know, I have a, a, a moral code as well. Uh, you know, I'm a human being, though, and I've certainly had my controversy uh, in my past history. You know, I, uh, I struggled uh, quite a bit as a younger man. Um, I struggled with addiction and, you know, along with that addiction comes a lot of controversy, yeah. you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm certainly not an angel. You know what I mean? Um, I've been able to get those addictions under control in the last 22 years. And uh, I'm a sober man. We've, we've, we've all had our controversies and we've all had our ups and downs in our, our lifetime. And, and, and I guess, taking responsibility for them and changing is, um, is important to me. And I take pride in that. Uh, let's talk about dark winds. Did you catch who did it? Not yet. You hear about this armored car robbery by witnesses placed that hijacked chopper headed into Navajo country. I thought we were talking about a double homicide. Dark winds in, in a lot of ways, historic, I guess, because I'm reading about it, historic for Native Americans on film, behind the scenes, responsible for it. Uh, tell me about, about Dark Winds and why it matters, above and beyond just being a great show. Um, along with Reservation Dogs and Rutherford Falls right now, uh, we're putting together these stories that are written, directed, and starring Native American indigenous talent, as well as a lot of the crew members as well. On Reservation Dogs, we, have, we shoot down in Oklahoma, and a lot of the crew are indigenous um, and the dark winds as well. A lot of the crew, we shot that down in Santa Fe. We shot it all on, on tribal lands. 90% of it was shot on tribal lands, the Tasuki uh, Pueblo, as well as the Cochiti Pueblo. And um, so the, 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 these things are important and they are groundbreaking that, um, that, we're finally being able to get these uh, our indigenous talent in these positions as well as producing the shows i feel like people should understand it for but for people who don't understand why it's so important to have that control and self-determination uh, help them understand well it we get to tell our own stories you know from our perspective and that that's important um we don't have to rely on uh white uh, males, you know, which have dominated this business for, you know, since the, the beginning of this business. Um, and we're finally able to take our, in, our own narrative and to put it down on paper and to get it produced and the public to see it. And that, that's extremely important. You know, we've been telling our own stories for thousands of years, so, you know, and we're finally uh, we're getting an audience to, to be able to, to delve into these different cultures. And, and, and that's important to break some of these, these tropes and stereotypes that, that white uh, men have, uh, 
have told about us. And uh, we're finally becoming uh, visible to, to, uh, to uh, the, the general population. Um, those stereotypes and myths that are about of Native Americans are finally being broken. I, I think that's, that's really important. Do you think that society, when you talk about the, the diversity in Hollywood and, and telling your own story, uh, I think a lot of times in, you know, in my community, African-American community, uh, that battle is a lot more in people's face. It's larger numbers. It's people saying, respect us. Is it a harder lift? Uh, because I don't know that society has been as aware as we should be of those similar struggles for Native Americans in Hollywood. Look at the way we grew up in our school systems. You know, they, we our history wasn't taught. You know, um, and we're finally getting the opportunity to control those narratives. Um, and you know, the way I grew up, you know, my history and, and knowing about my culture and stuff was not taught in school. So yeah, it's it's a uh, we're we're struggling. We've been struggling for decades, and and we've been struggling for five hundred years to tell our own stories. And uh, we're finally getting an opportunity to, to do that. And uh, hopefully, you know, the public and in, in, in society will embrace these stories. Slowly I've been seeing change within TV and film. And um, I hope to, to, to continue to see more change because I think we still have a long way to go. And I'm not just talking about indigenous representation. I'm talking about uh, African American. I'm talking about um, Asian representation, Hispanic representation. I think we all got a long ways to go, but um, I don't see it going back. I had a comedian Monique on not that long ago, and I asked her about Hollywood changing, and she wasn't quite as encouraged as you are. It's interesting that you're in it, and it's encouraging that you're in it, and you see things moving in the right direction. I've been doing this for a few decades now and and it's um I, again it it is moving in the right direction but i again i think we still have a long ways to go um i think paving the road for future generations is important to me um for again talent in front of the camera and behind the camera getting more indigenous people uh uh in job positions, in networks, executives. I think that's extremely important that uh, we have a more of a, a stronger voice uh, when it pertains to networks and training the right people to, uh, to get in those positions. There's a couple, a couple other things that you have in the works as well. So what else should we look forward to, look forward to you coming out with in the next year or so? Um, so we have the second season of uh, Reservation Dogs coming out in August, which I'm a part of, which they just won a Peabody Award, which is absolutely amazing. Congratulations. Yes, it's so amazing. I'm so proud of Sterling Harjo and, and so proud of Taika uh, that uh, put the show, created the show. I'm proud of the cast. And uh, it's a wonderful thing that we get a Peabody Award. I was part of Fargo, which also got a Peabody Award. and to go down in history of uh, uh, part of my legacy of being on two shows that won Peabody Awards is is quite an accomplish, accomplish, accomplishment. And I'm, I'm uh, very fortunate and very proud to be a part of those shows. Uh, we have a new sh uh, Marvel show coming out called Echo, based on a, uh, uh, a character called Echo, which is a deaf Native American superhero. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a spinoff from Hawkeye. I'm sorry. Yes. The show, the spinoff, uh, which they have put a wonderfully talented uh, Native actress named Alakwa Cox, who is from the Menominee Reservation in Wisconsin. They found her and put her in this this role, and she's just a strong, powerful human being that happens to be deaf, and she's also an amputee as well. And they've uh, spun it off and it took a show called Echo. And uh, I'm a part of that show along with Graham Green and Tantu Cardinal and Chaske Spencer, uh, Cody Lightning. And um, so that, that should be coming out within the next year as well. I have a, a movie called National Anthem written and directed by 
the talented Tony Toast that should be out probably, I would say, in the winter or fall. It, uh, it was a wonderful thing to be a part of that touches on uh, some Native identity issues and as well as um, some of the, the culture on the Pine Ridge Reservation and also some of the political movements that happened in the 70s that are still going on today with the American Indian movement. You stay busy. It's, it's not a situation where you're hurting for work uh, in any time throughout your career. Very fortunate um, and uh, privileged to be a part of these productions. Always look for, for people who have accomplished, people who are serving as role models for various communities. What's your advice for the next generation who's trying to get to where you are? Do the work, you know, um, do the work. Do prepare yourself. Uh, if that means going to school, if that means studying, acting, if that means um, uh, writing or uh, going to getting a degree in writing, just the work, the focus, um, and just putting the work in. I can't stress how important to dedicate, if that's what you want to do, dedicating your life to the work. It's interesting you say that because, again, in reading up on you, uh, they were talking about your preparation almost legendary. Like you, you learned additional languages for the roles that you were playing. There's hundreds of indigenous languages, you know, there's hundreds of different dialects uh, uh, within just even just the United States with the tribes in the United States. So, you know, it's not all one universal languages. We all have our individual cultures. And even within that, we have individuals within those, those, those different tribes and those cultures. So um, I'm given <clears throat> pieces of those languages <clears throat> in dialogue, but it's difficult to memorize and it's difficult to to get the nuances of those languages and to get the syllables and the, the right way to pronounce those words and the gutturals and uh, uh, the, the nasal sounds of, of the Navajo language and the guttural sounds of the Navajo language. It, it takes just focus, you know? And it's very important to me as an individual to make sure that I do the best job I possibly can with those individual languages because they are sacred to those individual tribes. You're humble. It's important. I, I agree with you. Um, but I think it's, it's much deeper than just lock yourself in and focus. Like that, that's work. And it's work that you have to be committed to because you can't tiptoe through something like that. You have to care. I, I don't tiptoe through that. We, um, for an example, in Dark Winds, we, <clears throat> we have a, a Navajo prayer that I have to do. And it's a long long prayer. I wanted to make sure I got every syllable right and every nasal and guttural right. Uh, we try to, as I pointed out, uh, end every show with the concept of use your voice for good. Is it a nonprofit you're working towards? Is it a message that you just want people to have? When, when presented with use your voice for good, what does that mean to you? Uh, use your voice for good. I, I work with the American Indian College Fund. Um, I do some promotion for them. Um, I think the main thing, as I touched on before, is using uh, my voice and my platform for good in the way of being a just a positive example for um, for youth, not not just for indigenous people, but it's just for the human race. Just being a kind person. I went up to. Uh, L and I, which is the Lakota Nation Invitational, it's a huge basketball tournament for the kids from different reservations in South Dakota that we have every year in Rapid City, and to to go up and and to to represent my people um, in a good way is is um, very important to me, and to be an example to those youth that you know they could do anything that they want to do if they, like I touched on before, focus on and do the work.
Every time we do the show, I find out that there are more interesting, entertaining people who are doing amazing things and having a real impact on society. And Zon McLarnon certainly falls into that category. I enjoyed the discussion. I look forward to supporting his career going forward. And I hope you did as well. I want to remind you that you can always listen to the entire interview on podcasts. All places podcasts are available. Make sure you subscribe. We'll be back to do it all again next week with another exciting show for you. And remember, whenever you can, try to use your voice for good.